Hello, my name is Jen Vanek. I'm Director of Digital Learning and Research at the EdTech Center at World Ed. Welcome to our webinar called Technology Testing for Adult Learning and Employment, Learning from Innovation. In this webinar, you will learn about seven promising technology tools developed to support workforce development and adult learning. Together with my colleagues Priyanka Sharma and Allison Asher Weber, I've been involved in figuring out how to field test these promising tools in different sites across the country over the last year. First, you'll have a chance to hear about the work that we did with the developers to come up with a field testing plan. You'll get to hear a description of each of the tools and then we'll share our findings with you. Welcome to the webinar. And my name is Allison Asher Weber, and I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives at the EdTech Center. We've been around about three years leveraging technology to increase the reach and impact of education and employment initiatives, and increasingly in our international work health as well. And we partner with a diverse range of organizations um, to accomplish these goals and also provide professional development both in person we often find us at conferences, but also through our e-learning opportunities. So please take a look at our uh, website, um, edtech.worlded.org. And, you know, we also um, are increasingly uh, becoming leaders on bridging the gap between how technology companies are looking at tech to accelerate learning, digital literacy, college and career readiness, and where we are out in the field. And this technology testing opportunity really gave us the opportunity to see some of the gaps and help bridge them. Um, so it's a great opportunity and thank you for joining us today. The field testing is in partnership with the Employment Technology Fund, the first social impact fund to invest in technology solutions that improve employment opportunity for low-wage working learners in the U.S. The Employment Technology Fund, or ETF, was launched in 2017 through the joint efforts of leading foundations to advance economic mobility for lower skilled, lower wage workers through targeted investments in the development of technology tools for education, training, and employment. By shaping the future of work, ETF and its portfolio companies work to close the employment opportunity gap facing 100 million adults who lack the skills, training, and opportunities to access family-sustaining jobs and meaningful employment. The Employment Technology Fund is, you know, a partnership between five foundations that you saw. Um, and with Walmart's funding, we were able to get, um, get out into the field and look how we can increase the impact of the investments the, the Employment Technology Fund made by advising developers um, from some of the challenges or, or opportunities we see out in the field on how to improve their products, uh, to identify promising practices, sometimes it's features of the tool, sometimes it's strategies, and then disseminate them widely to the field like through this webinar. Right, and you might have noticed too if you watch the EdTech Center website, we've had other webinars and we've had several blog posts on these tools. We have a few more blog posts coming up in, in March, um, so I encourage you to keep watching. So the, the work of the day is to briefly introduce our field test partners, describe the testing process, get into what I have described as five overarching findings, really seven to five overarching findings, things we've noticed that are common or interesting across all of the tools in these very diverse settings. As we can, we're going to have some discussion and um, talk about what is, will be coming next in our work. Um, just to forewarn you, it is really hard to describe all the great things about seven tools within an hour. So I'm going to do my best to draw on the most important things that we gleaned from the testing um, so that we can move through this in a way that feels like it's not drinking from a fire hose. But anyway, buckle up. <laughs> so um, as you can see on the screen here, we have representatives from Celeb and Care Academy, um, NAPRA, signifying North Star Digital Literacy Assessment, Perrin, and SkillSmart. These are the tools that cover the areas of learning and training, mentoring, support, assessment and matching, and job search and placement, which are all key categories of work that the Employment Technology Fund is doing. We also have um, representatives from our field testing sites, including um, Okapika, 
uh, which field, uh, uh, sorry, OCAPICA, the, the Community and Technology and Empowerment Program, and C2 Global Services. So if there are questions about the, um, the implementation sites, you'll have a chance to ask about those too. So very quickly, um, we just we know how hard it is to stay upskilled ourselves. Actually, Allison and I were just talking about that yesterday. How it's not just workers who are in jobs that that maybe aren't family and careers or family supporting earning family supporting wages. It's actually all of us that needs to upskill. But the goal of this testing was to shine a light on how challenging it is to bring tools that might be working well in other settings and help. Worker, working learners who, who maybe have had interrupted in form, of formal education might not have English as their first language of literacy or communication, and how challenging it is to get these tools to serve them well. Um, we also um, had a broad range of settings that we were that we were supporting through this work. So we needed to craft a research process that was going to get feedback to the developers and help them to find new scenarios to help them in their work moving forward. And so our, our field testing process had to be very iterative so that we could respond to challenges that came along the way. So this is a brief, uh, just briefly, I want to show you the, the cycle that we created um, where we would work together with the developer and their partners to craft field testing goals that would be informative for the partner but, or sorry, sorry, the developer, but we're actually doable for the partners, the implementation partners. Um, so we would do that through, after setting the goals, we would have a cycle, iterative cycle of data collection, analyses, advising to the developers and implementers. And then we're constantly refining this as we move forward over the course, course of the year so that in each setting we are able to draw on the strengths and, re and respond to and support the barriers to data collection that, rose, that arose. Um, we did this in two phases if we could through the onboarding process and then through the actual use of the tool. Another commonality in our field testing site was um, we started with um, a, re a review of literature on different methodologies and frameworks that support evaluation of online learning um, and came up with these categories that we were able to um, to present to developers to figure out which aligned with the needs for the project for them, and we would then choose which to focus on within each of the tools. So each of the tools had a slightly different focus. The research and, uh, for each of the tools had a slightly different focus based on the goals of the developer and the um, participants. So um, we're going to be moving through these five findings. Um, Essentially, that we have overarching findings, and then I have chosen one or two exemplar tools that manifest those, that finding really clearly. Um, each tool will be re represented directly once, but referred to several times along the way. So our first finding through this work was that mobile solutions make learning and training, coaching more accessible and scalable so that we can reach people who are not currently served by the adult learning system. And we, the tools in our, in our study did this in two ways, either through direct instruction or through accessing um, the mobile communication technologies like texting that are strongly relied on by the, by the community of learners that we're all working to support. Um, the, the exemplar tool um, within the instructional setting that we see here is CellEd. Uh, CellEd offers online, 24-hour, telephone-based, um, bite-sized lessons to learners in short, digestible bursts so that they can study wherever they are using whatever technology they have available to them and on, on the go. Um, we have two, CellEd has two-way messaging system for two-way engagement. And, that, and it makes it possible for coaches to directly engage and provide feedback to learners as they're working way, their way through these micro lessons. Um, there's also a, a learning management system so teachers, if they're using it in the more structured environment, can track progress and response to learners. What you're seeing on the screen here is an example on the left showing that cell ed can actually be used for conversation and delivery of learning through text messaging. A learner need not use the internet or a smartphone to access cell ed. On the right, you can see what, this, what content might look like through the app. We tested cell ed in um, two distinct settings, one in Miami using it with home care providers who are working 100% distance on the phone. Um, and then also at Seaport Hotel where we used it in a blended learning scenario supported by a teacher. 
Um, it was important to use these two distinct settings because the home care providers in Miami represent, you know, many of those 36 million adults who are not reached by formal learning in the U.S., so we need to be able to push into research that, that figures out how to support these learners um, more effectively. The study in both cases showed that there's a real need for workers to gain proficiency in both daily general English that can support oral and written communication and job and career-specific vocabulary that they need to communicate about their job. The learners indicated that the vocabulary instruction, particularly in the, in the Miami area, um, showed that it helps them figure out or attend to vocabulary that was coming up during the workday so that they felt more comfortable engaging in conversation with their English-speaking clients. One great example of this is Anesi, who's pictured above on the left. She talked about how the course increased her confidence at work and actually supported her persistence in her own English language learning. She saw her goals align, her personal and professional and academic goals aligned with the focus of the home health aid curriculum that Stella had created for this work. And because she, because of her persistence and her proficiency improvement, she actually earned a dollar an hour wage at the end of this. Um, teachers working with Celed at the Seaport Hotel found it to be a flexible teaching and learning resource that they could assign to extend learning out of the classroom. The, um, as with the home care workers, the port portability was critical for hotel employees. Um, I forgot to mention that the home care workers would study like on the bus when their clients were sleeping, any opportunity they, they could. Um, one worker from Seaport said, I have my cell phone in my hand all the time and we have a teacher anytime, any place to learn with us. The teacher at Seaport noted that she was able to use CELED as a way to reach very low level learners because there was a bilingual Spanish English level one option. And it was indeed the two students who were at the lowest level who made the highest level gain um, in, in pre and post testing. Um, at Seaport, 95% of the students that were in the blended learning class relied on CELED. And um, many of them even extended their use of CELED after the class was over. So what we have noticed here is that employers and educators partnering together to provide distance or blended learning and distance learning in a relevant context can help learners um, by giving them language and literacy resources to quickly upskill as employees and beyond and um, help, help employers um, make sure that learners can, can work on the job. For the partnering organizations who are providing the educational resources, these these apps can help provide um, a very um, efficient means by which to provide um, delivery of instruction and something that is um, research-based and micro, micro lessons and mobile context like CELED has been really helpful in these situations. Um, the next area to think about is leveraging popularity of texting. And with that, we're going to talk a little bit about SignalVine. Um, SignalVine is a two-way messaging application that job counselors can use to send both programmed and instantaneous nudges to help participants meet program requirements and announce job events. It's based on nudge theory, this idea that positive reinforcement can influence behavior. So SignalVine relies on analytics about when to cue in and send personalized and proactive text nudges. The system therefore can address this common challenge that organizations have, supporting learners um, persist through programming by helping coordinate and structure the communication that happens. What you see on the screen here on the left is an example of the setup for a programmed nudge. And what you see on the right is what the, a, a nudge might look like delivered through the telephone, so you are through a text. So you see on the left you've got um, response. If, if a learner posing answers the question about time cards, if they say yes, the programmed response is a nice picture of Harrison Ford with a thumbs up. If they respond no, then they get this prompt to contact their job developer. We tested this in um, Orange County at the Orange County Asian and Pacific Islander Community Alliance, the, the Oka, oh, which we call Okapaka. Okapaka is a CBO, CBO supporting health and social and economic well-being. Their work for 
program provides job training and work experience. Ocapaca has a small dedicated staff that monitors hundreds of program participants, and they needed to find a better way of doing outreach, getting people to recruitment events, and responding to administrative requirements in an easy and efficient manner. They knew from their work with clients in the past that texting was a preferred mode of communication, so choosing signal lines to support their work was a natural shift and it helps them reach way more participants in much less time. You can see on the right some of the analytics from their dashboard showing that um, within the adult workforce program that they tried signal vines, um, there was 54% engagement because of the text messages. That means that 54% of the total active participants in the program texted in at some time. The job counselors said that though they had not officially tracked such communication engagement previously, they observed more text responses than they had gotten email ever, like they got more text messages in the, in the time we were using this than they had ever gotten an email responses over the years. Um, the, I think that these statistics reflect the success of their program because they indicate that program participants acknowledge their understanding of uh, expectations and opportunities and were therefore then showing up for job fairs and for getting, getting their paperwork and their paychecks on time. This was also a huge money saver, or potentially could be a huge money saver for Ocapica. During the testing phase, they sent 20 of these programs and scheduled nudges. Um, they said that each of these nudges saved at least two hours in email time. Um, so that represents over the time of the testing, over 40 hours of staff time that was saved um, over the course of the year. The participants actually also appreciated this too. One of them, Leticia Harris, suggested that the nudges helped her stay on track and was a, a, a possibility for con constant reminder about program requirements, something that she would never have seen in email because she said it's so easy to lose info in email. Um, the other great aspect of SignalVine that, that, was, that was really valued were the response time. You can see on the right there's a chart that shows the response time to text nudges. Almost all of the text nudges were responded to within 10 minutes. Um, the time card nudges were especially, had an especially quick response rate. Um, so they were, the, oh, using something, a feature like this, programs can help fine tune their nudges in order to make them more effective and they can monitor their success by seeing how long their the response time is. The other um, important feature here is a, an example. It's intentionally blurred, by the way, so you can't see learner names. Um, SignalVine has a dashboard and learners, a, a crew, like a team of job counselors can work together to log in to see what responses have been. So it's not just one job counselor trying to keep track of a bunch of learners through email. It makes it possible for people to work as a team and stay, save tap, staff time and avoid a lot of phone tags. So another sort of best use here is that busy workforce development programs that need to avoid communication with large audiences could do this through texting. It's going to save agencies time and money. It's going to make it easier for program participants to stay connected and persist. And it's going to make it so partnering employers can access a larger pool of qualified applicants. The response and the, uh, to one of the nudges for a, a job fair at Home Depot resulted in more than double the participation in the actual job fair event as previous Home Depot events. So we had parallel um, job events available and a clear indication that promoting them via the text messaging was much more effective than the previous, um, than, than, than using email. So I am, I, I, how's everybody doing? You're probably like, whoa, a lot of information. So I'm going to pause for a second here and see if any questions have come in over chat. Um, this would be a great time to ask questions um, to um, Jessica, um, who could talk about cell ed. And we also, I believe we have Allison here who could talk about signal vine. Um, any questions come in? Mike? So far, I think you've been crystal clear, and people are still uh, getting their thoughts around all this good information. So I think you're good to go. Okay. Um, so we do have a minute. Um, would, any, would someone from Signal Finder Cell Ed like to just react or, or for Mel Capica? And just wait, I see, Rodriguez, I see you're on the call.
Okay, well, I, I will just keep going. If anything occurs to any of you along the way, feel free to um, chat a question. So the next finding is about screening in solution. And we, what we saw over the, 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 a couple of the tools is that screening in solutions, that is opportunities for job seekers to demonstrate their skill, do bring opportunities for overlooked populations to, and match them to opportunities that they're ready for um, by signaling to employers the skills that they have. Um, what we learned specifically is that the tools that have contributions from experts um, that assist in development and that content to assure ongoing validity seem to have the most buy-in, they had buy-in, but these aspects of these tools created buy-in from teachers, learners, and employers. We also learned, and actually I'll be talking about that a little bit more when I talk about Parent and SkillSmart next. We also saw that the content, it's really important for the content to be highly relevant. Um, for learners. I'd call North Star a screening in competency-based assessment, and because the content within North Star, I'll show you some of it later, is so, um, di like, directly mirrors the experience of being online, it seems as highly relevant, and it's, it's a really effective sort of screening in opportunity. So we'll start this section talking a little bit about Perrin. Um, Perrin is an attitude-based hiring opportunity or a resource or tool. It identifies student skill gaps and provides personalized social emotional learning tools to help um, job seekers develop these skills, especially around college and career readiness targets. Um, they, the program has built-in flags that help programs identify participants who might likely drop out and has additional resources like built-in coaching, individualized growth tips, and job-specific targets to further support goal setting. Karen also provides a lot of professional development with the programs that use it so that they can make the most of all the parent affordances. Beyond supporting personal development, what makes Perrin, uh, what, what we noticed made Perrin a, a powerful tool in this context was um, employ, it clo ha does have the opportunity to, to close the employment opportunity gap because it gives job seekers a way to find the right mindset and behavior and match those to possible jobs and how to actually work toward getting them. So they profile, um, by profiling high performing employees to calibrate target mindset ranges for effectiveness within a particular company, Perrin helps clearly identify goals for coaches to support job seekers to work toward those mindsets. And this sort of takes the risk out of hiring the hiring process for employers. So we looked at how Perrin use, how um, organizations use Perrin Pro to um, help learners and job seekers look in the mirror to get an objective sense of self, um, and then leaning into those characteristics that will help them within a particular job or job search, and then working um, to build skills where, where they might feel like they're falling short. So through personal program, the personal development programming and coaching delivered by Perrin, organizations in Denver that we worked with were able to develop learners' skills so they're not just prepared to enter into careers, but then they have mindset needed to succeed and thrive once they're there. Um, the core tool here that we're thinking about and talking about is Parent Pro, uh, which includes a parent survey, an assessment that measures over 100 coachable and changeable behaviors. By self-identifying how you are and how you'd like to be along 100 attributes of, of these coachable behaviors, Parent Pro helps learners understand their mindsets, drivers, core values, and attitudes and is a first step for helping them reach potential and work. Um, working with employer partners, um, a, a, a workforce development organization called Activate in Denver uses Parent to identify target ranges for core attributes for in-demand jobs by profiling current high-performing employees at their employer partners. Then capturing this data helps Activate and its training partners, um, one of whom is cross-purpose. Um, they help calibrate soft skills development for potential candidates. Um, so all of these tools working together help align candidate personal development needs to employer needs, and they're able to activate and, and cross-purpose they are able to work together to tailor coaching and give employers assurance that the candidates that they place will be able to perform in the jobs that they get. Um, so we are, um, let's see, let's skip over here. Um, so an example of this 
successful use of Perrin is um, a learner named Heather, who has actually been in the press quite a bit. Um, Heather and her husband were working at restaurant jobs. They were happy. Things were going fine. Um, and they didn't really have a, a, they weren't really working toward changing anything, but their son became very ill, and all of a sudden they had huge medical bills and realized that they needed to do something because they were faced periodically with, like, rent or medicine. So Heather heard about a, an organization called Cross Purpose, a CDO partner of, of the workforce development um, company Activate, um, and went to, to Cross Purpose to, to figure out how she might be able to make a shift in her, in her employment and her career. Um, she took the, the parent survey and figured, observed that pretty much the results were pretty much, as she said, dead on. Some things have changed you know, since she took the test, but some things have stayed the same. And even when they changed, it was, she said it was in line with what was going on in her life. So this is a learner saying that the, so the survey has really helped her think about um, her engagement with work and learning opportunities. But more importantly, Heather said that what was really beneficial was having the coach to work with the data provided by the survey, as she said, to pick it apart and to help me apply it to real life. At least that's what they did for me. So the coach, the coach using the parent system together created the package, which made it possible for Heather to advance in her work. Um, she um, she was able to get a job as a certified water um, management professional, which is a career pathway, not just a one-stop job. And starting. Um, her starting wage was much higher than what her work had been in the restaurant world. More importantly, I think um, Dan from Activate has told me that because of the relationship that Activate and Cross Purpose had, and because of the the the, the effectiveness of Parent, the the her Heather's current employee employer was was willing to take her on with fewer. Uh, skills and certification than anybody had ever been hired before, and she's doing quite well in the work. The next um, screen in skill that I want to talk about, actually, I'm going to hand this over to my colleague Priyanka Sharma, who did most of the field work in this setting, testing skill smart. So Priyanka, feel free to jump in. Um, hello, everybody. So uh, skill smart, it's uh, was built on the knowledge that job seekers have important skill building experiences that qualify them for work opportunities. But those, uh, a lot of times, don't appear on a resume. So they have a proprietary skills index, which you can um, see here, that, and SkillSmart uses that and helps employers map, define, and prioritize the skills needed uh, for job descriptions, and through this process, employers start to uncover how certain skills can be earned and validated through previous work, education, and other life experiences um, of the folks who are applying for jobs. So job seekers can use uh, the SkillSmart platform to explore job opportunities and understand exactly what skills uh, the particular jobs require, and then the system also can numerically match their skills to specific jobs based on the skills qualifications and also help them better understand their own personal skills gap for a job they might be interested in and then learn more about regional training opportunities to gain skills to become uh, much more competitive for that job opportunity. And um, so basically SkillSmart is a um, skill matching uh, platform. Uh, Jen, next slide that levels the playing field for applicants and improves outcomes for employers. And in contrast with the traditional hiring process where job seekers uh, you know, often lacking transparency into the actual skills required for a job, uh, might apply for numerous opportunities for which they may or may not be qualified. And employers typically receive an average of 144 resumes for a single job posting and spend less than six seconds reviewing each one of those resumes. And this happens all the while, you know, that the workforce development agencies, educators, and trainers are tasked with developing workforce pipelines without a good sense of the actual needs of employers. And without a clear understanding of the skills required for an open position, employers land traditional and often unnecessary proxies like degree requirements, which arbitrarily reduce the pool of applicants. 
So the the woman that you saw in the slide before, uh, she was uh, a participant from the Chelsea Collaborative, which is one of the partnering sites in Massachusetts. She used the SkillSmart platform um, to look for dishwasher jobs, because that's the job she currently had, not realizing that um, after she completed her profile, she was matched to several jobs that she didn't even think existed. And somebody like her, with her experience, she would even be qualified for, including a casino porter. And that's something that she's now very excited about because she really wants to work in a customer-facing environment and is looking forward to applying for this job in the coming weeks. And um, what is interesting here is, as you read the story, is that uh, we, uh, one of our partner sites was the New England Farm Workers Council, which is uh, a workforce development organization in Springfield. They worked very closely with SkillSmart and the employer in this case, which was MGM Resorts International, and they used the SkillSmart platform to match their client skills with job opportunities. And then what they did that was very interesting and uh, promising was that they used those job matches to get their clients motivated to apply for the jobs, but more importantly, upskill um, and have uh, make that like a motivation for the clients to uh, attend trainings to improve their chances of getting hired. Like this particular uh, participant was able to go from being unemployed to completing her high set and then getting matched with training that was offered for free to her. And then based on her interest and skill, is now a very happy employee of MGM Springfield. And you can read more about her journey here. She was um, also, uh, for her journey, she was <laughs> recognized by the uh, Department of uh, Assistance in Transitional, um, you know, the TANF folks, to uh, uh, be a role model for others. And that's kind of what has been her role in the community as well. So translating uh, jobs into skill requirements has, always, has um, also been a transformational experience for employers like MGM Springfield. Um, it is a new way for them to look at the jobs and see who is best suited for that job. So now they encourage the applicants uh, to bring along their skills index listings that has been generated from SkillSmart even during job interviews to further streamline the approach. And the hiring managers also find it very helpful to kind of see the skill match as they are um, interviewing them. And that kind of solidifies their portfolio as they're applying for a job. And the other really interesting thing that we saw was that uh, workforce development organizations uh, like the New England Farm Workers Council in Springfield uh, are using the skills listed in job openings to guide them to develop new trainings to upskill their clients and get them ready to apply for these jobs. And with this strategy, they have been able to place over 150 of their clients into jobs at the MGM resort, and they st and they're, uh, continue to work on that pipeline and continue to train and upskill clients as new job, in, job openings are available um, at that resort. So it's, uh, it's been fascinating to kind of uh, talk to the employers in this case, the workforce development organization and the clients um, at the other end and kind of seeing how uh, the system is working um, very smoothly in um, getting clients to upskill and then place them into jobs. Jen? Great, okay, thanks, Priyanka. Um, do we have any questions about Karen or SkillSmart? Or about implementation? So far, uh, so good. Still doing great. Okay. Well, please do chat if something comes up. Uh, so um, what you've just heard is um, what we're identifying as another best use here work Force development organizations that might mediate employment by leveraging the power of these tools, that the ETF-funded tools. Um, they help focus the effort of the CDOs or the organizations who use them, impacting their efficiency and increasing their success. They provide objective criteria for employers to understand skills of potential employees. And they help job seekers demonstrate skills and attributes that align with the job requirements that are specified in the apps. Um, okay, so moving, moving on to the next overarching finding. Um, we found that tool, across all these tools, tools for establishing a personal connection reso resonate well with the adult working learners 
and they tend to have higher utility or perceived as higher utility. Um, we found that use of personal connections to support engagement and persistence is important. Um, for example, NAPRIS, Heron and Stellad do this. And we also found that using technology can maximize the value of in-person interactions once they occur. Um, so we point to Signavine, Solid, Care Academy, Nepris, and Parent, and SkillSmart um, in, in these areas. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about Nepris for a few minutes. Um, Nepris uses personal connections to support engagement and persistence by bringing industry experts into the career search and the classrooms where adult working learners are. It's, an on, it's, a, it's described, self-described as an online skills-based volunteering platform that allows employers to engage directly with job seekers through live virtual interactions. Um, these live virtual interactions we, I, are industry chats where an employer will be beamed right into a classroom and do a live like 45 to 50 minute presentation on what it's like to have their job or what it's like to work in their field. Um, these add a richness and a color to flat, maybe text-based descriptions of what work is like in a place in a way that nothing other than video could convey. Our testing partner, C2 Global Professional Services, uses NEPRIS industry chat to bring these employer voices directly into customers across Florida and Texas. On average, each of the industry chats that, that they that they provide in the workforce system that they're that they that they are in reaches 35 classrooms and um, on average about 425 customers customers their word per chat. Um, our industry our testing partner North Shore Community North Shore Community and Technical College in Louisiana uses the industry chat to bring experts into a drafting program classroom where learners hear directly from professionals about how their drafting skills are required in different places um, in, in their work. Um, specifically, um, they had chats on naval architecture and electrical engineering. Um, so the other aspect of NEPRIS and the thing that was, we're, we're focusing on in, these, um, in this testing was the, a, a new use of a video library that NEPRIS has had available. So they'll record the industry chats and then make them available as a video library. Well, they have now created a, a career explorer that ties the videos to ONET data so that learners can do a, 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 a keyword supported career search that brings them not only ONET data about training, um, demand, salary required for a specific job, but then also links to videos about the work. So you can see there's a, a search here on the right for healthcare, which, came, which brought up a list of several different career, healthcare career jobs. And clicking on registered nurse takes you to a page where you have ONET data and descriptions and then videos of um, nurses who have actually come in and talked about the work. <laughs> uh, one job seeker um, that we talked to in, at, at an Alamo site in San Antonio was Joel. Um, he, he was at the Workforce Center to support a transition from working in construction to information technology. Um, and he said that the opportunity to use NEPRIS, both the video, the industry chats, and the self-guided work that he did um, with the Career Explorer, said he felt the videos felt like a personal invitation, like they were serious about me. Right? So these are videos, people, actually people to, talking to people. Um, and he said that this you know, this, it was through video, but he said this, this spurred interest in me for careers in industry that I hadn't thought about before. Um, the facilitators at the, at the Alamo sites also said that, that the Career Explorer is a valuable time saver for them because they simply could not afford the time to do all of the network to physically bring these industry experts into the classroom. So the, the actual search and the database made it possible for them to find videos to connect their job seekers with people who could help them understand what it's really like to have different jobs. Um, at, um, at North Shore Community College, the, the teacher in the drafting classroom said that he used the industry chat on naval architecture and environment and, and um, sorry, electrical engineering because he knew there were growing industry that's, that both, both both industries have lots of jobs in the area. And so he knew that if he brought in industry chats into the classroom for those specific areas, that it would spur his learners to become interested in the work. And in fact, 
after the um, industry chat um, on naval drafting happened, naval architecture happened, he had two students go and apply for a job, and one of them was actually hired as a naval drafter in a local shipbuilding yard. So it's this real connection, I think, to employment um, that's really powerful about NEPRIS. Um, this also occurred in a workforce center in Texas, a job counselor at the Hillcrest Alamo site noted that she uses NEPRIS weekly as a resource for her job seekers to learn more about salaries and expectations. Um, and that she has, in the recent past, she had, after a beat right before her interview, she had interviewed a client who was an accountant but was interested in moving into a sales, into a sales position and managed to network and weave her way into a sales job after having used NEPRIS. Um, so I think one of the most positive findings about this is that Personalization really helps in learning and to build interest in high demand careers in a way that just reading about jobs just doesn't. Um, it provides, NEPRIS has provided, it was obvious that NEPRIS provided the knowledge and access to knowledge that would otherwise not have been possible for people. Um, it, it gave them access to the social job seekers or kids or learners who come from more affluent families have just by the network within their family or their community. And this actually made it possible for people to talk to CEOs and companies who needed to hire drafters, um, which is, you know, this blew away the, the, some of the, the people that, that were able to watch these videos just to have that access was incredibly important to them. Um, so it can help the organizations by providing rich resources for learning. It can support learners and job seekers hear real stories and make real contacts. And it can support employers collaborate with workforce organizations and post-secondary institutions to share jobs about high, to share information about high demand jobs that they might be having trouble filling. Um, the final sort of big impact learning here um, is just, I guess this could be, a, you're probably reading this thing, rich media supports engagement. Well, of course it does. But what we learned is that there, we learned in the, the ways in which it does. So effective use of diverse media supports, ease of use for low, adults with low literacy skills, lack of prior education, and really helps those who haven't had much time on the computer. North Star did a great job at that. Um, effective use of video also supports impact and persistence. Care Academy has done a really amazing job and you'll hear a little bit more about that right now. The Care Academy provides online professional development to caregivers of older adults. The designers who put together the course understand the needs of low skilled and adult learners to support their mission to help adults not headed to college still have some sort of opportunity for career advancement. They created the PD to provide opportunities for these learners to be certified, to be home health workers. So get, providing a certification for workers who might have just been doing more sort of domestic tasks within a home. Their work fills a need in the market for more certified, certified home health, care, health, health aides and provides a pathway for these participants to actually get into future healthcare jobs. Um, the, the program that we tested it was in, there were two sites in Massachusetts. Um, they were both delivered as hybrid scenarios where learners covered course content online and then engaged in classroom and demonstration activities in an in-person class led by a nurse. The expectation was that they would cover all the content online before coming to the class and pass a, a module quiz of 80% over above. So we did this in two sites. Um, one of them is still going. Um, each of the, the, the sequence in each place is six weeks with 10 hours working online, four hours of in-class. In the site that just completed, seven of the eight persisted, and six of them passed the certification exam. Um, one of them will complete soon. As she's an English language learner, she just took a little bit more time to get through the assessment, but she knows the content, just has to read through it a little bit more slowly. Um, it's the rich media environment, I think, that's built into Care Academy. That, that has supported this persistence. So if you think about this, 10 hours of work online, four hours in class, every week for six weeks, okay? Every week for six weeks. These are working people who might have family at home that they're taking care of also. That's a huge strain on anyone. Um, now imagine being a newcomer, being an English language learner, maybe not having had a lot of formal education. This is a, this is a huge challenge. And all of these learners did it, but not only that, they said that they liked the intensity of the class and that made it, and the media made it possible for them to persist through it. Um, 
Care Academy has integrated different types of media into each of these lessons. All of them play on mobile devices, which is really useful. Um, so they have explanation videos, they've got demonstration videos, they've got key graphics that pull out um, interesting points. But it shows us how use of rich media can support a range of learners in multiple contexts who have really high demands on their time. So best use here is that employer educator partners can work together to support blended learning. We saw this also with Cell Ed, that it can support career pathways. It can help learners intensify and shorten the time it takes to earn a credential so they can work and then work toward that next credential. And it helps employers upscale incumbent workers, enhancing the provision of care for clients while creating opportunities for employers, which are, I'm sorry, employees, which then supports persistence um, in employment. So finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about how North Star uses media. Um, North Star uses images to convey meaning in a really efficient manner for English language learners and for people with limited English proficiency. Um, this is really important for, uh, for a tool like North Star, which is an assessment, it's an online digital literacy assessment, because it is used in a huge variety of contexts. Um, North Star is, is used in classrooms, it's used in drop-in labs, it's used in rural settings, urban settings, it's used with English language learners and incumbent workers. Um, so because they don't know where the tool is going to go, it has to be bomb-proof no matter what community it's dropped in front of. Um, so we found here through interviewing and observation that test takers who have limited English language and literacy proficiency fare well in the new module. Because the items employ very simple language, and creatively leverage visual media and audio to support comprehension. Not only that, the assessment items were written to remove abstraction so that the performance on the assessment is mirrored as closely as possible actual performance in the online space that it was meant to represent. Um, we did field testing for North Star in two metropolitan areas, the Minneapolis-St. Paul area and then around Providence. Um, we found a couple exemplar learners that we think um, demonstrate the meaning of the use of the tool in these settings. This is Guled, he is a native Somali speaker. He's been in the US for just, uh, he's been at 18 months, I think. Um, he was accessing North Star at the Goodwill Easter Seals Computer Lab in St. Paul, Minnesota. He said he'd started working on it in summer of 2018 and had finally passed his Windows operating system assessment. Um, Really important to understand that Gula then went and told everybody he knew about North Star and about Goodwill. So North Star being a hook to get people into the Goodwill program and the Minnesota Literacy Council program that was collaborating with Goodwill. Um, the word, word of mouth is not to be underestimated in this community of learners. They trust each other and if one person fares well in a tool or in a setting, it's gonna bring more people. Um, Gulid said that passing the assessment um, was going to help him leverage, oh, actually leveraging all the certificates he's pa he passed is going to help him apply for jobs as he uses his new skills to write a resume and organize his online job search. And in fact, I just followed up with the Goodwill folks yesterday and he does in fact have a job. He just got a job last week. So another example of a tool leading to employment. Um, yes, go. Oh, another example of a learner who um, was, who benefited from these tools. Um, she's now be, being able to engage in the education of her son in a way she hadn't before. The point here is that um, because we, you know, a developer like North Star has no idea the context in which the tool will get used, it needs to be able to serve a, a large range of learners and in fact it has. Two more big picture findings um, before we pause again for questions. Across all of these tools, I would say these are the two big learnings. It's really important to limit barriers to onboarding. Um, if there is onboarding required, like login, profile setup, um, it's really important that the requirements are either minimal or are very well supported by either media, resources, or in-person support. Um, you could look to North Star as an excellent example. They offer a free and open option. Consequently, in the, you know, in the span of just a few years, they have over, had over three million completed assessments. SigmaVine is also a really excellent example of this. A learner who's using SigmaVine doesn't really even know, or a job seeker who's using, getting that text message, that nudge, 
doesn't really even know that it's coming from SignalVine. They, there's like one opt-out message that happens at the beginning of, the, of their engagement with SignalVine, but there is no onboarding per se for SignalVine. Um, another interesting uh, tool that, that's reacting to this, uh, CellEd has, was notable in its responsive, iterative approach to thinking about onboarding and the flexibility in developing tools and changing the assessment protocols so that learners would feel more comfortable more early within the tool. Um, and um, so let me just speak, the other, the other really interesting learning is that I, I think that one of, the, one of the things that rang through with all of these tools was that nothing, no, no entity can do this alone. A developer can't do this alone. A CDO can't do it alone. An employer can't do it alone. But partnerships among the employers, the workforce development community, and education providers, along with the developers, really need to continue so that we, um, so that the learners and the end users and the clients can actually make best use of the tools that are best suited for them. So I would love to pause to see if we have any questions about the, the two tools I just covered, Northstar and Nepris, or about any of the other tools that have come up. Yeah, so during the presentation, um, Helen asked uh, about SkillSmart, about the profile of their customers and partners, to which Priyanka expertly wrote a uh, lengthy reply talking about that in the chat. And then also there was a question from Dan about the time invested during uh, per week or total um, when talking about Care Academy, I believe. Yeah, okay, oh, right, I saw that one, yes. Yes, it is true, 10 hours online and four hours a week, every week for six weeks. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, this is Helen. Um, just a Hi. point of clarification. Hi, sorry, just a quick point of clarification because I, I, I figured based on um, what was presented in the slide, there might be some need to just clarify. So uh, Care Academy in its origin is predicated as a continuing education platform. Um, so the idea being that we help uh, initially help uh, caregivers uh, persist in the workforce, right? And so uh, developing skills over time through short bite-sized videos. Um, so to date, we've done that with 30,000 caregivers, and caregivers can do that ad hoc. Um, so, you know, on average, we're seeing about 15 minutes a day in terms of engagement. What's different, though, in that in our engagement with uh, World Ed is that the specific program that we we're launching was specifically around upskilling. So it's the first time that we're leveraging Care Academy's digital tools as well as an in-person blended model, uh, overall a blended model, which we've never done before. So the six-week period, um, and I want to, I'd be remiss if I did not give special thanks to David Price, Michelle Hochberg, our content director, um, who made this all happen, um, and our team. Um, but it was, we were actually doing something we've never done before in our three-year history of our company in terms of creating new caregivers who'd never, you know, existed beforehand as opposed to our specific business model of uh, engaging caregivers who already exist. And we've done that with about 32,000 caregivers to date. So I just wanted to clarify. I, I appreciate that, Helen. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Any other developers want to add info? This is Lisa yeah. just talking about yeah. the North Star. And I mean, I, I just to this point on this slide about the partnership between employers and um, education providers, I think that's been one of the great things about the field testing and the development of the North Star that's kind of been revamped in the last year, um, that we've really seen the benefits of the process that really went deep into these sites. Um, you kept on saying, Jen, you can't know how it's going to be used, but the truth is through the field testing, um, I think the developers of that tool really did their due diligence in seeing how it would play out in the field, talking to learners, getting input, and that really shows in this in this last iteration of the module. So um, I just wanted to I guess, thank the developers for that. And also just to kind of say, wow, it really comes through in the tool itself. Oh, great. Uh, so, right, and the, and the North Star field test was interesting because we were doing iterative testing every single mod module. Um, so yeah. we had a lot of chances to refine and get it right. Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad that that's shining through in the tool. Uh, any other comments? 
is going okay, on. Okay, so what are we going to do? This is, oh, oh, go ahead, Jessica, yeah. Uh, sorry, this is Allison Grenny from Parent, and I just wanted to piggyback on that, that this opportunity really allowed us to um, see the entire scope of how at each point where Parent is able to be a tool that makes an impact on not just the organization or the workforce program that's supporting that individual, but um, the job seeker themselves and then the businesses who um, are really having to rethink their hiring process after having worked with an organization like Activate Workforce Solutions and seeing the power of how soft skills are such a key uh, component of uh, the success of that employee. Um, so it was great to be able to have this opportunity to see all the different angles of how a, a tool like ours is um, making an impact in the different uh, in the different stakeholders. That's that's great to hear. Yeah, uh, um, and so now we're going to move on to what are we going to do with all this information next? Um, I mentioned there are blog posts coming up, um, but then we also have another project that's tied to this that Priyanka is going to tell you a little bit about. Thanks, Jen. And uh, flowing from this project and the key learning from all our field testing and um, also leveraging the expertise of all our partners in this project, we're currently working on launching uh, workforceedtech.org, which is going to be a user-friendly repository of tech tools that details you know, the tool's key features, sample use scenarios, impact story, case studies, for uh, a multitude of uh, promising tech tools. And we hope that list will continue to grow as we curate more innovative and effective tech tools that are uh, you know, making an impact in the field and those that are uh, sort of on the horizon and are very promising. So be sure to check it out online in late March. You'll hear uh, more from us uh, through our communication platforms. It's going to be at workforceedtech.org, and we look forward to uh, working with you there because we're planning for it to be a collaborative platform where we can all learn from each other. 